Illustrious brethren, I now present to you illustrious Thomas K. Sturgeon, 33rd degree, the outgoing deputy of the great state of Pennsylvania, and now an active emeritus member of this Supreme Council and our Grand Chancellor. He will make the charge to the class. Sovereign Grand Commander, to each of the distinguished 33rd degree Masons in this room, and especially the class of 2019. 55 years ago, I was made a Mason in a small country lodge in western Pennsylvania. And today I'd like to share with you some of what I, th what I think I have learned and observed in all those years. Most importantly, I have learned how great this fraternity can be if we put into practice what we have obligated ourselves to be and obligated ourselves to do. Those of you present in this room today are the leaders in Freemasonry. In the degree today you heard the words, you are proclaimed a leader and commander among all your brethren in the northern Masonic jurisdiction with duties and responsibilities commensurate to that exalted rank. I ask all of you, as you continue your life in Freemasonry, to remember those words. I have a few thoughts about leadership that I wanted to talk to you about. Because you've got to remember that leadership doesn't necessarily emanate from the top. Leadership is at every level of every organization to include Freemasonry. And the success of our fraternity will be the result of the way in which you conduct yourself and the work that you do. A week ago, I heard the Sovereign Grand Commander in the Southern Jurisdiction uh, retire, and he talked about all of, in his 15 or so years, all of the strategic plans and the, 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 all the notebooks and all the committee meetings and the goals and objectives and all the work that people do, and then sometimes they just don't close the deal all the time. That's all of us. We don't. And here's how he ended it. And I want you to remember that. Ronnie Seal said that if you water the leaves, you must water the roots. Each of you must go back to your Scottish Rite Valley and you must be leaders and not a follower. The most important function of this fraternity today is to build it, to encourage new men to join, and to make the fraternity representative of the time in which we live. While it's important to get new members to join, it's equally important to keep the ones we have. And why do we lose members do we, that leave? There are many reasons, I won't enumerate them, but you need to be concerned with the number of people who join and the number of people who leave. It's important to all of us. At the same time, we need to remember that the Masonic fraternity is not for every person who joins, and we need to understand that. But our, mus our mission must be to care for the brothers who do find it interesting and worthwhile. Do we welcome our new members correctly? Do we make certain they're not sitting alone at their first several meetings? Do we make them feel integral? Do we make them feel like we truly care about them? And the answer is we don't always do that. In addition, we need to rethink more about how we portray our Scottish Rite degrees. And I know the slippery slope I'm getting ready to walk, so you're not, don't, you're not, getting, you're not going to trick me on this. <laughs> but we have DVD degrees today. We need to consider using them. Because I ask you this, 
Are our Scottish Rite degrees today interesting, informative, and most of all, are they understandable for the new man sitting in the audience? Do you think the majority of new members understand what they have just witnessed in some of our old sword and helmet degrees? Honestly, my brothers, the old biblical degrees are hard to understand even if they're performed perfectly. So we need to ask the new members, are they interesting and do they get it? Many of those degrees are on DVD format and many of you are still reluctant to use them. You know, the DVD degrees that, degrees that we've done, they are excellent. They do a better job than we can do in a live setting in most cases although there's a case to be made for the 14th and the 32nd degree and a few others. But we need to continue to care about how we, and how we tell our story. So I ask you to consider using some of the new degrees. The sound, the lighting, the scenery, the all-star cast all make for a great presentation. My brothers, these thoughts are coming from a guy around for 55 years. And if I can endorse some of these newfangled ideas, then certainly you should be able to do it also. <laughs> and I recognize, clearly recognize, that many of you get caught up in the old mantra that we have, that we never did it that way before. My brothers, be willing to change. Think about this now. Do we need to change or don't we? In 50 years, we've lost 75% of our members in a country that continues to grow in, in the number of citizens. We have made progress in the last couple of years with membership development. And even with that improvement, we lost three times more than, lost three times more than we took in. Remember that today... We have 55% less members than we did only 14 years ago. Today, 14 years ago, 38% of our Master Masons were Scottish Rite. 14 years later today, only 28% are Scottish Rite. So let me ask each of you a question. When was the last time any of you signed a petition for your lodge or for your Scottish Rite Valley? Because that might be a good time to start on rebuilding the fraternity that we love so much. And the truth is, if we can't count on you, who can we count on? Because you are the leaders. Leadership's a, diff leadership's a difficult proposition. I get it. I'm not trying to sell, sell something here that I can't do. But, you know, for the self we have too many people leading just for self-gratification or, self, or their own personal glory. You have to lead from your heart. It has to be a greater personal experience. You have to lead without intentional conflict and without a mean spirit. And you must not, not lead entirely for your own self-interest. If the Scottish rights to be successful... It has to be a team effort. Many of you know that I come from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, last football season, we had what was considered a fairly decent team. But the best running back we had decided he wouldn't play for us for a lousy merely $15 million a year. And the, one of the greatest receivers decided the last couple of games of the year he wasn't playing because he wasn't happy either. It was a cancer that affected the team. Don't think your Scottish Rite Valley is any different than those, that Pittsburgh Steelers story. We sent one to Oakland, though, and he flew into the training camp in a hot air balloon that he blew up with his own hot air, I think. <laughs> Don't ever get caught up in the idea that you're great and therefore your leadership days are all behind you. Remember, 
Remember who you really are. Don't become a leader who believes you know it all. Don't ever get the idea that the success that your valley has achieved is because of you. Let me tell you an embarrassing story about me. I had the privilege to serve as the Grand Master of Masons in Pennsylvania in the year 2010 and 2011. And I made some significant changes, some of which you have heard about and some of which you still don't agree with, and I get that also. But I went home one night after the, some regional meetings we were having, and I thought, it, I thought I was getting a better feedback after a few of them, and I was getting undressed, and I sat down on the bed, and my wife said, how'd it go? And I said, you know, I, I, think, I think they're getting it. I think, it's, I think, I, I think what I'm doing is going to work. And I said to her as I crawled in through the covers over me, I wonder how many grandmasters could really pull that off. And she said, one less than you think, go to sleep. <laughs> it took her to teach me to be a better grandmaster for the next two years. Sir Isaac Newton, one time, a, the world famous 17th century scientist and scholar of so many subjects, Someone asked him, where does he get all the inventive ideas, the theories, and all the things that made him so good? And Newton said, if I have seen further than others, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. Play that out for a while in your mind, because he stood on the shoulders of giants. He wasn't saying he, he was great. He said he was paying attention. And then there's... One of my favorite people in this world, illustrious brother Harry S. Truman. He was a great leader. Harry Truman said one time, it's amazing what you can, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. Although Harry also said one time that his early choice in life was to either be a piano player in a whorehouse or a politician, and he found out they're much the same. In addition to growing our membership, we must never forget how important it is to understand what it means to be a Freemasonry, to be a Freemason and understand our profound philosophy. We cannot live in the past, no matter how glorious our history might be. Masonry is the men. The lodge is the members. And the time is now. If we're going to be successful in growing our beloved fraternity, we must become more cognizant of how we treat our brothers. It can be best explained by a statement that our brother and Sir Winston Churchill, who stated, to build may have been the laborious task of years. To destroy can be a thoughtless act in one day. Let me say this. In our Pennsylvania ritual, and maybe some of yours, we, we, we say this, love one another in obedience to the will of God. And we also say, I will support a brother Master Mason's character behind his back as well as before his face. Think about it. Do we practice those two important virtues of our fraternity every day? Have you ever obligated yourself to help aid and assist a brother Master Mason? I think many of you have. So I ask you, is it an oath or is it a promise? Some of you get tired of us sending out all the solicitation, charitable solicitation letters that we do, and we do, especially for our Grand Almoners Fund. My brothers... We took an oath to help our brothers, and I'm telling you that, the, that if we took the last five years of everybody we helped in the last five years, 
this northern jurisdiction, you could fill the first 15 rows of this center section of people who we took out of darkness and gave them light. We, gave, we took them away from the big wall they couldn't see over. We took them where they thought they didn't have a future to where they had one. And it was all be done because of you and us and the willing to care for our brothers. That's what you need to know. Our greatest failure in our Masonic lives is to not be in harmony with our brothers. From our first day as a Freemason, we should continue to build the temple within us. And if we do, we'll be better human beings and more perfect Freemasons. Freemasonry teaches us human values and reminds us of our duties to love and respect one another. A perfect mason should, should show absolute respect to all of our brothers and live with them in perfect harmony regardless of any personal animosities. A good friend of mine said recently, smile more than you cry. Give more than you take, and love more than you hate. My brothers, our good Masonic mind requires tolerance, patience, understanding, and sometimes forgiveness. And it doesn't mean we can't disagree or even have debate, but the disagreement and debate must always be fraternal. In the Holy Bible, in the, book of, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 19, it states, A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. To be successful in this great fraternity of ours, we must work as a team, be led by a leader who is sensitive to the feelings of all involved, we will always disagree, sometimes, of course, but we have to learn to disagree with fraternal grace. Now, let me get this out of the way. I know there's people in this audience from Pennsylvania who are saying Sturgeon should have practiced what he was preaching. I know that. <laughs> I sincerely tell you, I always tried to be Masonic and tried to be fair. But, you know, I came from a profession of managing hundreds of police officers, and it's likely that I was probably harsher at certain times than I, than I should have been. But regardless of my personal inequities, I consciously tried never to forget to lead this fraternity, and, and it was different than being a police chief. So the point is that I wasn't perfect, nor do I expect you to be either. What is necessary and expected is that you be aware of how you treat your Masonic brothers. If you're true to our teaching, then we know there was only one who was perfect. I have learned that people will forget what you said, will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. My brothers, over the years we've had too many caretakers and not enough leaders. This fraternity was running on automatic pilot and few brothers realized that we were shrinking. So I ask each of you, you're the leaders, the leaders of Freemasonry right here in front of me. Are you a caretaker or are you a leader? <laughs> and there's a big difference, I'm gonna tell you. My illustrious brothers, we have a sovereign grand commander who leads with a wide angle vision who is implementing new changes with modern objectives. He has a path forward team with new ideas and a definitive plan to move the Supreme Council into the next generation. The commander has demonstrated his willingness to make change, even by having a female as part of his brain trust. Join this thinking leader. And he still enjoys being called the Demolay Kid from Clifton, New Jersey. He's a man who believes that blood is thicker than water, but nothing is thicker than brotherhood. So as I stepped down, I told him last week, I don't want to go. <laughs> 20 years as an active member, I assure all of you, 
I'm not just a man. I'm a mason. I gave it all I had. I, real, I mean, maybe that's, not, maybe that's not fair, but I think I did. I worked pretty hard at it, you know. Never regretted a second of it. I loved it. I love the way I feel when I see, see my brothers. It's a, you can't buy it. It's not for sale. What we have is not for sale. Right there tonight, a brother and I came together. I put a ring on a brother tonight that was the ring of his best friend because we just changed our rule. And they were both of our best friends, and he's no longer here. That's a moment that only you can get by being a Freemason. We hold the world hostage on good feelings. And darn, I tell you, it was, it's a, it, it, it was, it was a moment forever. So my, bro- my illustrious brothers, let me sum it up. It's important to make this ancient and honorable fraternity increase in membership. It's important to provide good leadership. And it's important to maintain financial stability. But the most important function of Freemasonry today and for each and every one of you is how we treat our brothers. We do we respect and love them as Freemasonry, and it, by Freemasons. And if and when we do, only then will this fraternity flourish the way we expect it to do. My brothers, love one another in obedience to the will of God. Thank you very much. <laughs>